Hello, this is Canada, population one. The weather is a piping hot 15 degrees outside. Our main resources are human resources. Get it? Human resources? Our friendly colonist, Orange, is the wonderful counselor. He is the only member of this council. Today our nation rises with the research of microelectronics. We've come so far as to plant actual rice in the Arctic. It's amazing, but we still lack the power for almost anything. And so today we eagerly way to bulk goods trader from space. Yes, outer space. What mysteries lie before us. In the cosmos, we learn by stretching out our minds on the table in front of us. We make metal by burning, and we research by thinking, and we violate the Geneva Convention by consuming human flesh, gaming Cassandra Classic by keeping our colonist count low. This man is terrible, really just a waste of flesh, but his steel club is quite nice. An opportunity at things, more things. Oh. Geez, he's gotten really close. Careless of me, but we've lowered his moving and we should be able to get away quickly now. Orange manages to wound everybody by the time they get into close range. And we can use this- why did you give up? Oh, he's bandaging. Well, I still find it satisfying to get in a good shot or two. We have a 33% chance of- There we are. Thank you. Victory meal. Ah, and here comes Kevin with a few items to trade. Shalom, Kevin, my friend. Ah, uh, he won't take most of my things. Regardless, it's an opportunity at money. Money and food. Acceptance. Resourcefulness. And we utilize every fibrous scrap we find for there are more resources for us. With research complete, I'm actually gonna do something now that might seem kinda weird. I have to deconstruct everything I've built up till this point. Much has been a waste, but that 161 steel gives us just barely enough for a comms console and an orbital trade beacon. These matter more than anything else in here, and we need to make this work if we wanna survive. There's the trade beacon, and there's the comms console. These will become for us the only technologies that matter. We can't do anything if we don't have an orbital trade beacon. We just need to wait for a pirate bulk goods trader now. What I had never checked with this character was that he, um, he can't carry anything that long a distance. And our long distance from the Covenant of Ithwalia makes trade of large quantities pretty much impossible. So here we wait. We have plenty of food, so we're not worried about that, though. In the meantime, it's time to go on a quest. There's one I found nearby here with an item stash of a bionic arm. It's light enough for us to carry, and that means we could sell it to an orbital trader to get more steel. It's still a a decent journey, but it's probably enough for us. And we haven't seen any action yet. This may save us some time and some life, and we can always pick up meals on the way back. Near with nightshade, Orange reaches the destination. Ah, uh, to be in a different biome. Here are some muffalo. Well, it's only, it's only one way to find out what's here. Though, of course, we can haul over some chunks to make ourselves safer before this entrance. There's an ambush. Uh, it's hares? A snow hare ambush. Okay. I'm alright with it. I'm, I'm okay with this. This is fine. That's... Far less than I expected, to be honest. That was, that was very funny. I thought unknown dangers were always mechanoids. Well, while we're here, we may as well get the power claw and sleep inside. We can eat this snow hare tonight. And there goes Orange, plenty of food in hand. And we send Orange onward to his destination. And we make our way back to Delai, meals in hand. For we have brought home a plethora of meals. And now our storage makes it so that things won't actually deteriorate. Anything in the room can be traded. Now we're ready to sit tight and wait for a long time. We don't need to worry about research and... I mean, the inside of the house can pretty much just be a freezer anyway. His clothes will keep him warm in practically any temperature. And so we can spend our remaining days grinding up to the final intellectual stat of 20. All our work now pays off. We've been waiting for a bulk trader for so long. Another raid by the Cervexa Covenant. Still just a single guy. Any good? How? How are you these two things? All right. Well, I need I say anything else? We all know how this ends. Easy as one. Two, uh, almost three. Three, that ought to do it, and good. The Manhunter pack of snow hairs. Here we are. Oh, what an adorable and sad sound at the same time. Here's the next. 40%. There we are. Just what we need, and now it's... Ah, there we are. Die. Another volcanic winter quest. Well, we still need money. I accept. In comes the shirt. I'm not taking off my current shirt, it's freezing. Ah, I've waited for this. 
Unstoppable Seal Industries. Lend me your goods. Lend me your goods. Okay, let's see. Sell all of the human leather. And uh, spend practically all of that money on steel. Wait, right there I've got a lot of trading I want to do. I'll give you my- th I'll give you all of the furs. I don't really need that. I've been killing stuff since the beginning. I mean, truly, we need steel more than anything else in the universe. I accept. Ah, here comes the steel. Unstoppable seal industries. You've changed my fortunes. We'll also take some wood, because why not? It's a good material. We'll need the advanced component. For now, that's a lot of new stuff. And it's snowing outside as well. I've never had so much shit in the Arctic. It feels good, though. It feels good. Ah, in the dead of... In the dead of a volcanic winter, it's it's a weird time to feel a surplus, but let's get right back to work. Civilization must continue now. I feel so rich with all of this metal. 631 steel and 46 components. Now we can really get to work. Firstly, we'll place solar panels near our wind turbine. This will give us a steadier supply of power over time. And orange gets to work, and that's good. Obviously this won't be great for volcanic winter, but after this it will clear up. Next, we deconstruct our power lines. This recycles our steel, and we place a second wind turbine beside the first. Then we have twice the power output. As a test, we'll undertake the creation of a sun lamp, and see if we have enough power for it. Power is still inconsistent though, and we need a better grid. To build consistency, we'll need more batteries inside. Reinstalling the heater, we have enough power now to consider making a hydroponics basin. Here goes nothing. Though the room is still too cold for growing, and we aren't well insulated. I'm going to begin expanding out the walls in a way that seals the temperature best. We'll use wood since we don't want to waste steel. It could lead to invaders setting our room on fire, but we don't have many other options. But the lights are still flickering and we need more power. We need to thicken our walls. At the very least, we can seal off the doorway. Temperatures are rising, but we still need to seal off the outside. Now it's up to Orange to seal himself in. And lacking many other materials, we're forced to use steel for the outer walls. There we are, just building on. This should be enough to finish off the outer walls. And the indoor temperatures are steadily rising. There we are, just to finish off the walls. And there we are, sealed in now. Another raid, and one, two, three, Four, five, that's enough. At long last we can grow rice. Finally, it's almost the end of winter. It's 50 degrees inside, and the rice are actually growing. It may not be growing fast, but we're producing steel as well. You really can't do any better than a double wall for insulation, unfortunately. We could do another heater, being raided by the rifle gang. And as it turns out, this is actually quite efficient. See, our food in here will spoil. So we're going to need to build a separate room as a fridge. Right now we can do only this large for a fridge. Unless, is her club made of steel? No, unfortunately it's limestone. Oh well, that's the best that we can do. And Orange will probably make short work of her. That's it. It's great. 280% growth rate. Ah, uh, finally, food storage. At long last, we have fast growing rice inside. The, the plants are not doing very well. They're growing fast, but they're, uh, they may die if the lights go out. And some of them are gonna die. We'll just replant all of that. Like, look at this. We're gonna go from 77% grown all the way to 80% grown. It's just a few minutes. It's just a few minutes. Look, there they go. Growing and growing, trembling at their own growth. Only a few more bits of flesh for you, Orange. There we are, ready to harvest. The first harvest. And six, not much, but only... But six rice is something. Five, a botched one. He does have a passion for plants. And he gets 16 rice out of it all. If I am to survive, we need even more steel. It's still not enough. We can deconstruct the smelter. Here we are, one more wind turbine coming right up. And that does it, it's enough. Now we can sustainably grow crops. Ah, a transport pot. We needed some food right now. I mean, ah, this is, he's terrible also. Ah, another bulk goods trader. We're saved. We're saved. I was getting pretty close, actually. There we are. And we'll just trade. If we can get one organ, that means a lot more steel for us. I'm gonna go for a kidney. My sister and I used to love the board game Operation. And I'm a pretty good doctor. Here we begin. Any luck on the kidney? We got it! Yes, I did. I forgot. I had inspired surgery too. What a wonderful surgery that was. And we'll try for the rest. Let's give it an honest try. And that failure, well, let's leave him for the rest. That gives us everything we need. Plenty more steel. And as it turns out, that's enough for a second hydroponics basin beside the first. There we are now. Good as new. Grizzly bear migration. A little sewing. A little cutting. A little meal. More planting. Our home is almost self-sustaining. Look out, world. There's a new cannibal in town. Orange has unintentionally grown into everything that hipsters aspire toward. Eco-friendly and sustainable. Subversive. Owning a 
a lot of thrift clothes, and he also owns antiques of deceased immig immigrants. I don't know what to say there. Or raided again. Really not a great name for a raider. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll take all of that. And that. And that. Now we restore everything. Rebuild the wall. But now, my friends, it's time to start thinking about the future. A man must provide and- Well, to make money, we need to get really good at crocheting. And by crocheting, I of course mean tailoring human leather into various accoutrements. For if we get really good at this, it will be a major source of money for us. And we like money. Will you begin with some simple pants? Now this is really something else. We've set up a whole clothing factory and research facility in the middle of the Arctic. The pants may not be good, but eventually they'll be higher quality and make him happy. And it's warm in here now that we can... We don't need to wear warm clothing anymore, we could just wear, you know, only clothes that make Orange truly happy. And here we are. I like it how both thoughts are being had at once, as if he has some sort of, some sort of dual personality. Ah, Megasloth migration while we have visitors. A rare opportunity. Okay, Orange, you know what to do. I must intercept the migration. Begin. Megasloth revenge, yes. Exactly what I wanted. Oh, it's perfect, it's perfect. Help me, help me, help me, you good people. Ah, oh, love the covenant of Ithwali, let's just... Not aim at them. I don't- I'm not responsible for anything. Uh, we, uh, may have harmed their relationship, and slightly more, uh, but Lord forgive them, for they know not what they do to themselves. Alright, we're going to need to give them a lot of gifts, but we got a lot out of this. We got a lot out of this. I'm gonna need to do some nice things in the future for them. No, don't do that. And good, no one else was set on fire. Shit, they left one of their own guys. Well, crap. It'll still be worth it. We need to save this man. Give him the best medicine. Ooh, his left arm was bitten off. Still worth it for the pump shotgun and the grenades. And the mega sloth. And the meat. That's plenty more fur for us. Well, it's time to see this blessed man off. He's nearly had both of his arms bitten off. Farewell, Gideon, the neurotic explosive expert. I can never imagine why they would have combined those two traits. He's a very neurotic, as optimist, misogynist, incapable of dumb labor, and an explosive ride. The most wonderful, majestic backstories. Farewell, Gideon. Farewell. Happy trails. Sorry about the arm. That just about summarizes the uh, moral victory that this colony has been. Now cloud watching. Okay. Look at Orange. We actually have a surplus of food now. He's gone vegetarian. He's decided to be- not even a vegetarian, he's become- I'm going to say that he embodies the spirit of veganism. And eat. look, even Gideon exited the map healthy. They like us more now for Adithwalia. We're still getting raided by only single colonists because we've kept our colonist count at a mere one man. We're getting a steady income of steel from all of the steel weapons that they seem to bring on them constantly the food, and not to mention that they themselves are food. I don't think it's as good as my current weapon, but I'm gonna try out the pump shotgun next. Seems like this thing really has some good potential. Here we are, right outside the house, and let's give it a try. It has more stopping power. This is my main interest. It could just slow people down as they come near us. I wanted to get the auto shotgun, but I didn't have enough money. Oh well, like a really messed up version of a thrift shop. And with that, we have enough to complete the house. And with that, we have another ship passing by. Finally, another cannibal. Alambaugh. You'll fit right in here, Alambaugh. Cameron Alambaugh is excellent with plants. Oh, you're- come on in, friend. Comes from the Covenant of Ithwalia. Excellent, excellent. It would make us such great friends. Alas, we lack the money. We lack the money. But looking at our dotted history of wealth, doesn't really seem like we've gotten very far. Well, much as expected, it's taken a lot of patience to get here, but we've finally reached sustainability. If you could call it that. Time and time again I've said it, one truly is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. But in the case of Rimworld, two can be worse than one. Especially in the case of squirrels. But it's no skin off my nose. Well, I think I'll leave it there for today. We have a surplus of food and we're self-sustaining. Now we just need to get better at protecting ourselves and obtain some actual resources. Wouldn't hurt to have another colonist and maybe a long-range mineral scanner as well. But I must say it is satisfying to see the green here now. And it'll take years, but you might even be able to reach endgame with this colony. Until then, we'll let Orange dot his days with growing and research. For he now is a planet-leading master, and he has decided upon veganism instead. I think we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. As always, thanks to my patrons. Your help is the steel raining down from the sky in the midst of my arctic winters. My name's Ambiguous Amphibian, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.